Hello folks, my name is Mark, this is Why Hate the World, how are you guys doing? So the election is pretty much over. Um, nobody has really called it yet. I think there was like one news organization that actually called it. Uh, but the major outlets, you know, uh, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, The New York Times, stuff like that, uh, Associated Press, um, they haven't called it yet. And uh, But it's pretty obvious at this point that um, Joe Biden won and Donald Trump lost the election, so... <laughs> <laughs> just let that, uh, let's just bask in that for a second, you know, uh, Donald Trump lost. Oh, it feels so good, uh, man. And you know, I, I really debated just like making a, a video where I just ran around screaming at the top of my lungs, you know, <laughs> laughing and shit like that. Um, but no, nah, that would be, that would be juvenile, you know, I mean, I just want to rub it in just a little bit. Anyway, um, <clears throat> and of course, you know, the uh, Trump people have immediately gone and, um, you know, started all these court cases and stuff like that to get ballots thrown out, that kind of thing. But it's pretty much impossible at this point. So please remember that um, of the four states, um, you know, excluding Alaska, because Alaska is going to go to Trump, but of the four, the five states that... Um, were remaining. There was Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Alaska. Um, Joe Biden is ahead in three of those, and in two of those states, the, that lead is insurmountable. So, um, Georgia, he's ahead by roughly 4,000 votes, right? Which is pretty close. 4,000 really isn't very much, and that's going to trigger, like, a recount, you know. So that one conceivably could flip, although it's not likely. But um, the other two, Pennsylvania and Nevada, he's ahead by 20,000 votes, and Pennsylvania is ahead almost by 30,000, right? And, um, yeah, so you can recount all you want, but there's no way that you're going to recount, you know, and suddenly have a 20,000, 30,000 vote difference. That's just not how it works. Usually when there's a recount, it'll the numbers will change by, like, maybe a couple hundred, <laughs> right? So it's just not going to happen. And please remember that um, in order for Donald Trump to win, he has to win all five of those states, right? He has to win Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Alaska. He has to win all of them, right? So if Joe Biden just gets one of those states, that's over. And it looks like he's ahead by, he's ahead in three of them. So yeah, you know, um, like I said in my last hot take video, you know, a lot of people were getting sort of like Florida 2000 vibes over this. And so was I, admittedly, I was a little afraid that there would be some court shenanigans and then maybe the, you know, some things would get thrown out. But at this point, I'm not worried about that anymore. I, it's impossible. It, it really is impossible because they would have to basically throw out hundreds of thousands of votes. You know, like, like the fear was that he would go in and there'd be a court case saying that all votes counted past 7 p.m. on, you know, election day would get thrown out. But at this point, like, for example, in um, Georgia and North Carolina and Pennsylvania, that's like hundreds of thousands of votes. <laughs> and there's no way that any court is going to say we're not going to count, you know, 500,000 votes. That, that's, no, that's not possible. So, yeah, dude, it, it's over. It's over. Uh, Trump lost. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump lost. So there are people on the left that are not as happy with this result as you may think, right? And because you'd think that, okay, well, Trump lost and we're going to get the, uh, you know, asshole orange fascist out of the White House, <laughs> right? What more do you want? Well, um, people on the left are a little pissed because we didn't actually take the Senate. And that means that, you know, the Republicans are still going to hold the Senate. Mitch McConnell is still probably going to be the Senate majority leader. And they're going to do the same thing that they did to Obama, you know, to Joe Biden. So they're just going to obstruct, 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 right? And some people are a little pissed at that, you know, because we really do actually need um, some government intervention here. You know, we, we need some COVID stimulus, number one, <laughs> right? Kind of stimulate that economy a little bit when you got 20 million people out of work. We need um, a stop to foreclosures, you know, we need a ban on foreclosures until the, the you know, COVID-19 is over with, right? 
you know, the states need money in order to keep unemployment benefits going. We need a lot of stuff right now. We need, you know, we basically need the government working together in order to solve these problems because it's crisis mode right now. You know, just because the election's over doesn't mean that we're out of hot water and everything's going to be fine on, you know, January 21st. It's like, no, dude, <laughs> right? We're basically staring down the barrel of a Great Depression and Mitch McConnell and the Republicans are under no obligation now to do jack shit. And you can pretty much guess, you can pretty much, you know, um, take it to heart that they're just gonna not allow anything to pass. And, you know, will the public turn against them? Well, they haven't been so far. So that's bad news pretty much for all of us. But, you know, there are a lot of things the president can do himself through executive orders. I mean, if anything, Trump has shown us that, right? That the president isn't as powerless as everybody thinks. And they could do a lot of stuff through executive orders. You know, he can they can work around Congress as much as they can. They can get the CDC to stop, you know, for uh, declare a health emergency and like stop foreclosures, for example, that kind of thing. So, you know, there's hope. There's hope, but you know, the thing is, is the, the fight goes on, right? It's not gonna stop, you know? And that's something that a lot of people are wondering. It's like, well, how exactly does Biden win the presidency, but then um, Democratic senators in certain key states that he wins did not also win the Senate, right? Well, you know, um, you can, I think, really, um, you can amount that to gerrymandering, number one. You got to remember that, uh, you know, that's still a problem. And a lot of those states, you know, Georgia, for example, they're heavily ger gerrymandered, <laughs> right? And that's part of the reason why people like Mitch McConnell keep winning elections over and over and over because the, you know, districts are set up in such a way that no Democratic challenger stands a chance, right? So that's one thing that you got to keep in mind. Another thing that, um, you know, another thing that people are pissed at, they're like, they're wondering, like, why was this election so slim? A margin, you know, it's like if he, you know, Joe Biden wins, what does that mean that he just basically won by the skin of his teeth, essentially, which I think once all three of these states get called for him, that's not the skin of his teeth, <laughs> right? That's actually a kind of a landslide, <laughs> right? Like he's going to have something like 330 electoral votes or something when this is all done. But people really were expecting based on the polling that on election night, it was going to be this landslide. It was going to be a blowout. And that's not what happened, you know. And so people are wondering, well, why? Why didn't this happen? How come Donald Trump and his toxic Republican cohorts weren't rejected as hard as they should have been, depending on the polling? Well, the polling could have been wrong. You know, maybe they overcorrected. See, the thing is, the polling this year, they tried to correct for the Republican redshift that happened in 2016, right? So in 2016, the polls were off the road the other way, right? And they underestimated the Republicans. So this time, maybe they kind of overestimated them and that fucked up the polling somehow. And then that's why in like, you know, Joe Biden has a 13 point lead in Georgia or something when in real life, it doesn't really look out. It didn't turn out that way. That's one thing to keep in mind. Um, another thing that I think people are not thinking about, though, is that we may be seeing the effects of um, voter like intimidation, uh, voter like uh, obstruction, um, that kind of thing. So you got to remember, like in, in Georgia, for example, in 2016, um, the current governor who was running for governor was the guy who was in charge of the elections in Georgia. And he, like, kicked off 50,000 people, <laughs> right, from the voter rolls there. And they didn't get to vote. Well, those people still answer polls. So, you know, this time comes around, they're not able to vote, right? That skews the polls a little bit. Or, uh, you know, so we're, we're seeing basically vote tampering. You know, we're seeing that kind of uh, the effects of voter suppression, I guess, right? Um, you know, Texas, for example, uh, the governor there makes it so that each county only has one drop-off box. And it's like that for weeks at a time. Or the biggest um, example of voter suppression this cycle, 
of course, was um, Louis DeJoy and Donald Trump conspiring to slow down the mail, right? So you have, you know, um, the vast majority of people voting by mail this time, and they monkey with the post office so that, you know, votes get lost, <laughs> right? Um, there's lots of reports of votes getting lost, things like that. There's a, there's an unsubstantiated claim of 300,000 ballots lost, although according to CNN, that's uh, that's been debunked, but... You know, over the last month, month and a half, how many stories have you seen in the news of, um, you know, uh, bags of mail being uh, left by the curbside or thrown in the trash or, you know, something like that? Or how often have you heard people complaining about mail not showing up at all or showing up late or, you know, being delayed, that kind of thing? How many votes are going to come in, you know, after the deadline? Now, that were sent within, you know, within the right time, but come after the deadline are not going to be counted. I think that's a big part of it, too. And I think, really, if they didn't do that, if we didn't have this type of voter suppression tactics going on, you probably would see the vote aligned a lot closer with those polls. The reason I say that is because polling is pretty much an exact science, <laughs> you know. Um, and uh, once you understand how it works, it's usually pretty close. So what does this all mean, right? Well, I'm hoping people have learned the lesson um, with Obama and, and Donald Trump even that once you elect a president who is of the party that you like, that should not be the end of your political engagement. It should be the beginning, right? Joe Biden just being president is not going to fix anything, right? If anything, now, people should be more engaged than they were before the election. The, the protests of people out in the street demanding things, you know, like uh, uh, criminal justice reform and that kind of thing, they should protest even more now, right? And you should be calling your congressman, you know, you should be writing them letters, actual real snail mail letters that go inside an envelope and go through the post office, right? You should be making your voices heard and donating your time and your money to these causes in order to get them going because now is, you know, because this is what happens every time there's a presidential election and, you know, the Democrats, for example, elect a Democrat, and then all of these movements just go to sleep and then they wonder, like, you know, nothing ever happens. 2000, uh, 2008, you know, uh, Barack Obama gets elected. They, the anti-war movement just goes away figure, okay, well, we got a, we got a Democrat in here now, he'll fix it all. And he doesn't fix it. Well, why doesn't he fix it? Because you guys didn't make him fix it, right? That's how it works. It's like, they're, they're, he's not going to just do the right thing, right? Just because he has a D after his name, just because he says he believes in the same shit that you believe in, right? No, that's not going to happen at all. You have to, you know, the, the advantage now is there's somebody, Joe Biden, right? The advantage is now there's someone as president who will listen to what you have to say, <laughs> right? Who's a boat, you know, who will, who will respond to the pressure that you put on him, right? And so now you should be out there protesting even harder. So this should be the beginning of your political engagement, not the end of it. So I hope that's, uh, I hope that's something that everybody understands out there. Because if you don't have that in mind, you're going to be disappointed over the next four years, guarantee it. Anyway, um, that's all I got, folks. Adios.